we're going to finish this section out with a really fun one that I personally found very challenging, and I think you would too, especially if you tried to do it in a language that uh, didn't work with dates as well as Ruby does. So this is problem 19 of Project Euler, and it says you're given the following information, but you may prefer to do some research for yourself. And starting in 1900 on January 1st, it was a Monday. And taking in these criteria, 30 days in September, April, June, and November, 31 and all the rest, except for February, which has 28, except on leap years where it has 29. A leap year occurs on, uh, on every year evenly divisible by four, but not on century dates unless it's divisible by 400. So just in case any of that... Uh, it didn't make sense. <laughs> You're uh, perfectly fine. We're going to see that we don't even need to take this into account because of how we're going to integrate it with Ruby. So the question is, how many Sundays fell on the first of the month during the 20th century? So we're going to take a date range of January 1st, 1901 to December 31st, 2000. This one, we're not going to be able to do in one line, but we still are going to be able to do it pretty efficiently. So the first thing I'm going to do is require the date library from Ruby. So now that we have that, let's set up some variables. So we're first going to set up a start date and we're going to call the time class and the local method and we want to set this to 1901 and because we're looking for January 1st of 1901 when we call this that is what it's going to give us so we can prove this by saying start date and let's run this so Ruby project Euler this is 19 and see that gives us January 1st, 1901. And it also gives us a uh, time of zero, but we don't have to worry about that. Okay, so now that we prove that that works and our time library or time call is working, let's call end date. So with end date, I'm gonna say time local and uh, local has, if you look up the documentation, has some other methods or arguments, has some optional ones. So if you simply give it the year, it'll give you January 1st, like we saw above. But if you want to, you can make it more specific. So I'm going to say the year 2000, the month 12, so December, and the day 31, because that's what the question calls for. And now it just to uh, prove I'm not making this up, let's run this run it again and you can see this gives us a year a date object a year 2000 and on december 31st so uh, now that we have that we're going to set up our last variable and we need a counter variable so i'm just going to say sunday counter and set this equal to zero since we want to get all those sundays so the first thing we're going to do and it's pretty neat i'm going to show you how we can actually use these dates and use them almost like collections in the sense that we can iterate over them. So Ruby has some really neat tricks up its sleeve when it comes to working with dates. So I'm going to create a while loop and I'm going to say while the end date is greater than or equal to the start date, I want you to keep going. So I'm going to do that and I'm also going to change my tab size. Okay. So everything in this loop is going to iterate over and over again uh, until the end date is greater than or equal to the start date, which essentially means we're going to be counting back in time. I thought it'd be a little bit easier to count back in time as opposed to going uh, forward. So uh, let's, uh, let's start. So the first thing we need to do is we're going to convert each epic timestamp to a string and then check if it's a Sunday and on the first of the month. So the way we can do that is I can say if the end date and then we want to call in the string for time method and we here we're going to pass it A or capital A and we want to say 
uh, and also uh, you can look up the string for time documentation and see all the arguments you can pass it. If you pass percent %a, what this is going to check for is the named day of the week. So what we can do here is check and see if this is Sunday or not. So that's the first part of the conditional. The second one is we're going to check and see if the end date and then string for time, call this again, and see the day. So we want to see if it's the first day of the month. Set this equal to, and this is a string, so set it equal to zero, 01. So this is, even though it's complex, I think it's pretty straightforward. All we're trying to see is if in this date that we're passing, if it is uh, on a Sunday and it's on the first. So if that is true, we want to increment our Sunday counter by one, and that's it. And then when it's over, then or um, the next thing we want to do, I don't like how it's doing that. Okay, there we go. Okay, now we want to decrement by a single day. So let's see. So right here and say, I had to look this one up, 86,400. And you may wonder what this is for. This is the number of seconds. So, the, or this is what you get by subtracting one day from a time object. So if you want to iterate one day at a time, then you subtract that. So I can show you and proved it that I'm not a liar here. Uh, let's take uh, our end date and uh, right here I'll say, I'll print this out, end date minus 86,400, comment all this out and see if this works. And there you go. So you can see it was 12.31 and now it's 12.30. So uh, that's the way the epic timestamps work. Okay. Okay, so we have everything here, and this should be all we need to implement it. So let's just print out our Sunday counter. So all it's doing is uh, when you give it this range, we're taking end date, which is this, and we're subtracting one day from it. So this is going to take a little while. It's going to iterate through every single day from the year 2000 on December 31st all the way back in time to 1901, January 1st, one day at a time. And each time it's going to check what that updated end date is and see, is it a Sunday and is it on the first of the month? And if so, increment the Sunday counter. All in all, I think it's a pretty straightforward solution, but uh, it's definitely pretty complicated if you've uh, never worked with dates in Ruby before. Let's see this working. And there you go. And that is a correct answer. 171 Sundays that fell on the first day of the month in the past 100 years from 1901 to 2000. So great job. That included quite a bit. That included, that was a little bit of a complex algorithm. Everything from uh, integrating while loops with date ranges to uh, running string for time to, to be able to pull out the name today along with the month and then uh, running the uh, subtraction on the number of seconds as the way that you're decrementing, which is also a little bit different. But overall, the algorithm works. And so you should be happy you, you know how to work a little bit more with dates and how uh, you can work with algorithms in them as well with Ruby.